Alright guys, thanks for watching and welcome back. So the first thing we need to do to get started is we need to install Python, right? So let's go ahead and uh, pull up Google. We're just going to type Python. And go to the download. We're going to use the 3 series. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to do uh, Python 3.5.1. This is going to install the uh, executable. Now, just uh, to kind of touch on some of the key points of Python 3.1 or 3.5.1, uh, the 3 series is um, you know, the newest version of Python, so it's quite a bit different from 2.7. So there's going to be little things if you've ever used or earlier versions of Python, where like when you do print, you have to put it in parentheses, and um, it has better Unicode support. The, the newest version of 3.5 also has a sync and a wait for parallel programming making it a little bit easier so even though Python's uh, single threaded um, you can still make use of some functional aspects of it and um, Python 3.5 uh, will make that easier so let's go ahead and um, make sure you click add Python 3.5 to your path that's really important um, that way your program your, your computer is going to know how to execute a Python program so to give you guys a background on Python uh, if it's an interpreted language so Python has um, an interpreter which is like a compiler that you're installing on your machine now so when you write Python code you put it in just a text file and we're gonna use a, a program to actually write our code but ultimately all it is is a text file and you tell Python to read that text file and it turns that text file which is human readable into a machine level language and then it, it actually uh, executes it and that's how it works so that's kind of in a nutshell how it works and that's really all you need to know uh, for that so let's go ahead and install this joker now as far as what tool uh, we want to use to to work with uh, Python there's several editors out there a lot of them are free um, so Sublime Text is a popular one for Python, um, and it's free for evaluation purposes, so it's not necessarily a free program, but the evaluation is, is somewhat subjective as far as like how long you want to evaluate it, so I guess it depends on uh, what your moral compass is there. But Sublime Text is, uh, is free, like I said, for evaluation, and uh, you guys might want to check that out. God damn, this computer's slow. So here's the Sublime website. You can just download it and run. Um, here's the Atom installer. This looks very similar to Sublime, um, so they're both pretty looking like that. Uh, my personal favorite is Python Tools for um, Visual Studio. Visual Studio is great for C Sharp and other languages. JavaScript has a lot of tools and everything. Uh, the Python Tools has uh, really come a long way, so that's typically what I do. Uh, Visual Studio should be free. Uh, the Express Edition, so you guys can get a get a hold of that. But you think if you're going to use Visual Studio, you have to download this Python tools for it, and it's like an extension that it adds on to it. Uh, but having a tool like this is really cool because it has IntelliSense, so it'll kind of give you hints on what to type and what you're looking for and what you may be doing wrong. Uh, it's just an invaluable tool. So there's several options there, and I'm not going to try to press which one you guys should do. Like I said, I recommend Visual Studio, but uh, that is somewhat of an acquired taste, and it's because I have to use it for other languages. Um, and you know, maybe a particular Python person all the way may not like it because it's it's more of a Windows product. All right, so now that we have uh, Python installed, let's go ahead and open up a command prompt. So if you're on Windows, you would just right-click here and go to the not the control panel, god damn it. Um, command prompt. And uh, from the command prompt here, you should be able to just type Python. And if everything went well because we added it to the path, your computer knows what Python is. And it's going to go ahead and ex uh, enter into this little um, isolated environment that all Python installations come with. And what you can do is you can actually write real Python code in here. So I could say x equals this is a, a string and then print x and this is one of those print things that takes a little while to get used to compared to uh, two and three you have to put anything inside the print and in parentheses so you can see it prints out the value of our string there so that's just an isolated python environment if you want to exit out just press Control c and that'll exit out of it 
but if you have Python there, then that's good. So with Python 3.5, it comes with a tool that we use um, to install packages. So if you've ever used any sort of package manager in .NET world, you hear of uh, NuGet and um, in Python, there's the pip installer. And then also in Node is the NPM package manager. So pip it comes with the, the Python installation. So if we said pip install Django, this joker should go out and pick up the latest version of Django. And you can see it's actually being flagged by my uh, antivirus. Hopefully it doesn't do that constantly. But anyway, it's actually reaching across the wire through the web. It downloaded uh, the Django framework and then it's going to go ahead and install so you can see that's all taking place right now and we'll just continue to go ahead and give it a minute here And just to give you guys an idea, let's go ahead and open up the file explorer because I want to show you where packages are going to be installed. If we go over to our C drive and we need to find our Python installation. And what's weird, um, as a security concern, they no longer install Python on like your root directory. So it's actually going to be under your users if you're using Windows. And here's my user. And then if I go all the way in here, um, all the way under app data, I think local. Then you have, no, that's not it. Um, might be roaming. Son of a bitch, I don't remember where it installed. So if we looked it up online, you can see it actually puts it inside this location. So local programs. So app data, local programs. Python, Python 3.5, lib, idle lib, that's not it. Python 3.5, 32, okay. All right, this is, uh, this is what we were looking for here. So in this folder, under your, if you go under lib and then go down to site packages, you can see that this is where we actually have any sort of um, modules that we're installing through pip. And you can see Django is now on here. This is the download file that was downloaded. And Python has these weird uh, wheel files now, which are kind of replacing their old uh, tar files. And, um, you can see that this is like a temporary directory where it reached across the web, downloaded Django into this directory, and then it installed it. So you can see this is the actual install Django. This is the Django core. Uh, this is everything that makes Django tick. So um, all this code is written in an open source way. So if we went to uh, Django under GitHub, I apologize about my computer being slow. It, it's just kind of slow with like all the, the webcam and everything going on. Uh, all that stuff makes it a lot slower than normal. But if you've ever wanted to inspect uh, the code, you can actually go through and look at all these folders or you can do uh, a search on GitHub here. So this is in master. We probably don't want to do that. We probably want to look for a specific version. You can see the stable 1.9. So if we go down to that, let's expand this here. And you can see this uh, inside the Django folder. That's everything that you see where I just showed you. So all that stuff right here is all inside here. So if you've ever wondered here, you can see the kind of uh, changes that you know individual files and stuff like that have been uh, that have have been made. You can see contributors and all that stuff. So it's pretty interesting if you've ever wanted to get involved in something like that. If you've also wanted to search a code, like say um, you get some sort of weird error message, you can actually type that here and it'll search inside the repository and give you an idea. Because um, a lot of times you may get some sort of exception that's occurring inside of the Django source code. 
and it, it'll point to a line and um and you can look that up either in here uh, it might be easier to look it up in there and then kind of you know be like oh okay it's in config local and blah 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 so anyway those are just some tips some helpful tips on uh, where Django is being installed and all that stuff all right so if we go back down here um, you can see that it's now uh, successfully installed so if, if everything went well we should be able to run this Django admin.py as if you just run that and press enter you're gonna get all these different things um, that are available like DB shell migrate run server all that stuff what that means is that um, it knows where Django exists so uh, everything is installed correctly now we have Python 3.5 installed we have Django installed so in the next video we can go ahead and create our first Django project alright guys thanks for watching uh, please subscribe vote up the videos if you would I'm trying to get uh, more views and hopefully if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out and ask me I'm trying to uh, be as helpful as possible in this and uh, try to promote Django as much as possible alright guys thanks for watching have a good night bye